Jack Roosevelt Robinson, was known as Jackie Robinson, was born on January 31st, 1919 in Cario, Georgia. Jackie was the youngest with five siblings. Later on in life, he married his wife, Rachel, and had three kids. On October 24th, 1972, Jackie Robinson died of a heart attack. Jackie made an impact and took many stands for African Americans in the game of baseball. First, Jackie's early life. Jackie's father abandoned his family and they ended up moving to Pasadena, California. His mother had several jobs to take care of her family. Jackie attended and graduated from Washington Junior High School in 1935. He was also sent to the John Muir High School where his talents were noticed. He was a great athlete in football, baseball, basketball, and track. Jackie graduated from Pasadena Junior College in 1939. Jackie excelled in both football and baseball, but his true talent was football because he had outstanding speed and elusiveness. Besides Jackie Robinson and Kenny Washington versus Granny Lansdale and Bobby Robertson, both teams came into this game unbeaten. It was a terrific football game. Even to this day, I can reflect back of the uh, Jackie Robinson had a great football team. Jackie was recognized all over the nation in 1941 when he became the first athlete in the history of UCLA to earn a letter in four different sports all in the same year. Those sports were football, basketball, baseball, and track. After college, Jackie enrolled in the Army during World War II. Jackie took a stand in 1944 when he refused to move to the rear of a military bus at Fort Hood, Texas. Robinson was charged with insubordination and court-martial. MLB and the NFL were both white-only league at the time, so Jackie was forced to abandon his football dreams and begin his baseball career. Two of Jackie's teammates at UCLA, Kenny Washington and Woody Stroh, became the first players to play in the NFL in 1946, one year before Jackie's big MLB debut. Jackie was discharged from the Army in 1945, and since he couldn't play in the MLB, he joined the Kansas City Monarchs of the American Negro League. When the Blacks created the Negro Leagues, historians and journalists ignored them. Clyde Sukeforth, a Dodger scout, told Jackie that the Brooklyn Dodgers general manager, Branch Rickey, wants to meet with him. Jackie went to several meetings, and Mr. Chandler, the new baseball commissioner, quoted saying that if they, African Americans, can fight and die on Okinawa, Guadalcanal, and in the South Pacific, they can play ball in America. Branch Rickey agreed to allow Jackie to play, but everyone knew that the first black to break the color barrier had to not only be physically tough and talented to play in the majors, but also mentally tough to withstand all the racism that would be coming his way. Rickey knew that Jackie was the man he needed. Rickey allowed Jackie to play under one condition, that he was not to respond to the abuse he would face. Jackie accepted. Jackie was a phenomenal player. He had a .346 batting average, 137 home runs, 734 runs batted in, 197 stolen bases, and .883 on base plus slugging. Yes, Jackie hit that ball. Struck his bat, the crowd went wild because he knocked that ball a solid mile. Yeah, boy. Yes, yes, Jackie hit that ball. Satchel Pitch is mellow, so is Campanello. Newcomb and Dobie, too. But it's a natural fact. When hit that ball, he hit it. Yes. And that ain't all, he's so hard. Yes, yes, Jackie's real gone. Jackie had a playing style known as tricky baseball that most players in the Negro League played with. That playing style gave Jackie the aggressiveness asserting his right to be at the plate or on the base path. In 1949, Jackie was selected Rookie of the Year off of his outstanding .346 batting average. 
Becky led the Brooklyn Dodgers to the World Series and was voted the league's MVP. Jack Roosevelt Robinson became the first African American to break the color line when he debuted on April 15, 1947. This symbolized the racial integration of American society. Pee Wee Reese was the first to be nice to Jackie. Really embrace him. Pee Wee, from the outset, felt that if I were the only white guy trying to break into all black league, I'd want somebody to be my friend. And he says, if Jackie Robinson has the ability and he can make it, that's all I'm going to ask. We had some deep south boys on there, you know, from down in Alabama and Georgia, and they didn't appreciate it at all. And if you sat down and played cards with Jackie or something, they would let you know about it. You know, hi, in the world, can you sit down and play with this so-and-so? Hey, man, he seemed like a pretty nice guy to me. To Philadelphia. Jackie Robinson endured many difficulties throughout his career. He never made a big action to take a stand, but he always took stands by proving wrong all the people who thought black people would fail. Him enduring these difficulties without action was a big stand by itself. He mainly didn't act out because he kept his word to Ricky and took in all the abuse and racism without fighting back. Jackie received insults, hate mail, and death threats. Jackie received many forms of racism. Sometimes when he was on the road, cities would not allow Jackie to stay at their hotel or restaurants would refuse to serve him and he would have to eat on the bus while his teammates were eating inside. Social injustice. Well, we'd go into St. Louis on the bus eat, and poor Jack had to go to another hotel. That's pretty hard to live with. Sure he had it, but, he, but uh, never changed his personality or, or his thoughts about the game. When that game started, that first pitch, he was all ball player and all man. The St. Louis Cardinals threatened to strike rather than let Jackie, a black player, play in their game. Jackie was attacked at games also. During the games, fans would scream insults, pitchers would try to hit him, and he got kicked while sliding. Jackie took a stand by continuing to play exceptionally to show that all these actions aren't changing anything. Jackie was taunted even worse where he was at weight games. Sometimes things went too far and him and his family were threatened. Jackie. He felt disappointed at times, uh, frustrated, disillusioned, um, down, but uh, he would pick himself up. He's very resilient and uh, very determined, you know, really stubborn about the thing. He was going to make it work. Jackie Robinson was continuously bombarded with insults. Jackie's courage and grace and how he handled the abuse inspired other African Americans and helped with the civil rights movement. This is an example of how Jackie and himself didn't take a large stand, but he influenced others who took a stand against discrimination. In 1949, Jackie had enough of being silent. He finally made the big stand everyone was waiting for. He became an outspoken and controversial opponent of racial discrimination. Jackie took a stand against discrimination and made it public this time. I am a religious man. Therefore, I cherish America where I am free to worship as I please, a privilege which some countries do not give. And I suspect that 999 out of almost any thousand colored Americans you meet will tell you the same thing. But that doesn't mean that we're going to stop fighting race discrimination in this country until we've got a lick. It means that we're going to fight it all the harder because our state and the future is so big, we can win our fight without the communists, and we don't want their help. On the field. Jackie's words criticized the slow pace of baseball integration and Jim Crow laws. He stood up and said that these are things that need to change. Jackie took a stand and led other baseball players who wanted to take a stand by using their economic power and popularity to desegregate southern towns, hotels, and ballparks. Jackie Robinson's success influenced the NFL, NBA, and tennis to allow black people to play in their leagues.